travelingmail.com. Good morning, travelers. We are headed up to Burka or Bjorka. Uh, which is a living history Viking museum. It's on an island. The only way to get there is by boat. So we are queued up and waiting to buy our tickets online with the Stroma company, uh, the same company we used to go on our archipelago tour. Um, we're kind of excited. It's just the boys. Um, we're just gonna go out and do some hiking today. And we're looking forward to it. So thanks for coming along and uh, we'll see what happens. buy tickets ahead of time which is recommended for the busier days but also you can buy them on the boat uh, which is what we're gonna do and it's not very crowded today uh, we did get there about a half hour early uh, could have gotten there today we could have gotten there a lot later lesson learned uh, and there's also a snack bar you can have lunch on the boat on the way back uh, and oh look here's a bike um, and uh, a word about Swedish coffee. It is probably the best coffee I've had on our trip so far. Uh, in Italy we got a lot of lattes and that sort of thing, but here it's very dark, very thick, not espresso, uh, but strong. And we throw a little cream in there and it is awesome. And it's uh, very satisfying to have that. As I mentioned, you can buy your tickets on the boat, and they even take credit cards as long as there's a cell signal. It's pretty neat driving through the upper end of the archipelago, which is actually, I think, on the lake section, so this is all fresh water. You make a couple different stops and let other people get on, and the guide gives a tour over the loudspeaker as you make your way through the archipelago in both Swedish and English. After a long two hour boat ride, we have arrived and we have gone past some buildings and we're going up here to the museum now and get a map and see what we can do and also get under some shelter for a little bit anyway and then we'll go explore. The museum itself was actually fairly small but very cool too because it had all these dioramas and aspects detailing what life must have been like back in the Viking Age. We headed down in the rain to the living history section of the island. Because it was Sunday and raining, the period actors weren't there, but I enjoyed it anyway. Can you see how shallow these are? That was a huge advantage for them. Yeah, because they could go in up rivers and stuff. The boys were a little less interested in all my facts and history, but they had a good time swinging on the swing. It was really beautiful even in the rain, looking at the boats in the village and imagining what it must have been like a thousand years ago.
So they just had these little um, little village recreation houses, gardens, etc. As well as some longboats out back. And it looks like most people are actually gone because of the rain and because it's Sunday. But um, the longboats, there's like five of them over there, six of them. And they are really cool to see these actual boats and what it must have been like. And I think this is actually kind of typical of the weather here. So it's pretty brutal to be uh, rowing around in those things. And uh, as a history person, someone who's into that sort of thing, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool for me. And the boys enjoyed swinging and kicking each other as usual. Let's go over here, guys. at me. There you go. The boys normally have no problem creating their own little worlds, so having a wall and a watchtower made the battle that much better. They put on walking tours in both Swedish and English. We selected the second tour and kind of lucked out. Uh, they have people in period dress and explain the graves and the site of the original village as well as why it's currently underwater. The sun came out for our tour anyway and got some great views of the island from the hill. It was just a beautiful, beautiful place. Just at the end of the tour, the weather started to darken up again, and we walked back to the museum past some sheep. Turns out that Viking sheep are actually pretty nice. We decided to take the first of two English language tours, and it was great. Uh, not very long, a little bit of a walk up a hill, saw a graveyard, a hill fort, and they pointed out where the uh, town used to be. Uh, lots of good questions were asked and answered. And now we're gonna go back and get some lunch. Um, there's a lot of other walking to be done, some trails and looks like some roads to follow. Uh, but we, given the weather, are going to find some shelter and have some sustenance. And then I guess it will probably be time to get back on the boat. You only get about three and a half hours here, which to be honest with you is plenty. Um, the little house sections because of the rain and I think also because it's a Sunday didn't have many people there. One lady had a little shop and you could go in and she was breaking, you could buy some bread and honey and butter and uh, little trinkets and that sort of thing which is kind of cool. Uh, but all the other stuff was closed up which was a little disappointing. I would say that three and a half hours is way more than enough time uh, to do this island. What are you sitting on? My jacket. What's on, which is on? No, it's on this part. Pretty soft, huh? Yeah, it's kind of soft. Um, I can actually feel it. Since the rain started coming down hard after lunch, we moved straight on to Fika and then moved out onto the boat for the ride home. Anders played with the camera a little bit. We met some nice people from Australia. Uh, but that was pretty much it. I headed home, got a train, and met up with Melinda again. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll come back next time and see some more of our Swedish adventures, and then of course Ireland. Uh, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and watch another video for us. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Take care.